What's up everyone, I'm Steve and welcome to another episode of Millionaire Habits. In this video, I'm going to talk about the nine things I did to earn six figures in my late 20s. You ready? Let's go. And keep in mind, six figures these days may not seem like a lot, but this was like 12 years ago. So six figures in my 20s 12 years ago is a pretty respectable salary. That's probably 150, 200K now. So what are the nine things I did to earn that much money that early in life? Well, I demanded that I got paid what I was worth. And here is how that works. Number one, I showed up every day. My dad used to tell me that showing up was half the battle, and quite frankly, I could not agree more. Your competition is not that great. I mean, people show up midway through the day. They take time off whenever they possibly can. They just don't care. They're not in the office. So if you are the person in the office, your boss always sees you in the office, guess what? That's going to bode well for you. I was an early morning person. I got into the office before the majority of my managers did. So every time they walked in the office, there I was in my office or my cubicle doing my work. That absolutely makes a difference. So show up every day. That is how wealth gets built. And number two, just do important stuff. Don't just do what you're told and that's it. Whenever I got a task, I really tried to understand why that task was given to me and the and the purpose of that task so I can go above and beyond. I would accomplish my assignment and I always went one step further. And that makes a huge difference with how reliable you are in the office and how confident that your managers will be in the work that you do. So go above and beyond whenever you can. Don't just get your work done and move on. Get your work done. Take the extra step and you are going to set yourself apart from all your other coworkers. Number three, I negotiated my salary. And the best time to ask for more money is when you switch jobs, when you are hired on to a new company. They want you. They want your services. So that's a great opportunity to ask for more money. Do okay. not rely on getting raises after you're hired. Really take the opportunity when you are hired to get as much money as you possibly can. And I switched companies every three to four years. And every time I switched companies, I got a 15 to 20% raise. That really helped to build my wealth quickly. Number four, I worked with my boss, not for my boss. By that, I mean I didn't just take orders, go do them, and ask for something else. I really tried to work with my boss to come up with taskings, to take that extra step and be a little bit more responsible in the office with what needed to be done. And this meant that my boss really trusted me. And when you develop that rapport, that trust with your manager, that makes a big, big difference. And that is a big reason why I was promoted from a software developer to the director of the information technology department in one day. Because over those months and years previous, I worked with my boss, not just for my boss. So he knew what I was capable of. The organization knew what I was capable of. So when a change happened, guess who they tapped to lead the entire IT organization? This guy. Number five, I asked for raises. I said before that the best time to get a raise is when you're hired, but don't just leave it at that. If you are hired for a certain position and your responsibilities increase or you're just doing a lot more than you were originally hired for, quite frankly, you deserve to be compensated appropriately for that. So ask your boss for a raise when the time is right. Before you go into your boss and ask for more money, Make sure this is coming from a position of power. So you're using specific achievements, specific qualifications, all the overtime that you've been working. Remember, you don't want a raise. You deserve a raise. And here is why. That works. Number six, I was not just a yes man. My boss could always count on me to say no when something did not make sense. Now, that doesn't mean I always did that. Of course, I did my work, but I like to have discussions with my boss rather than just taking orders from them. And over time, that really build, built up the trust that I talked about earlier. So I did not just say yes. I did not just say, right, boss, you are correct. Of course you're right. You're right all the time. Real managers don't respect 
Yes, man. Real managers respect people who are going to be honest and open with them. That's how businesses, that's how real money-making businesses work. So do not just be a yes man or yes woman, a yes person. Don't be a yes person. Really be honest with your boss, but in a professional way. And that's going to build that trust and rapport that you're going to need to make more money in your future. Number seven, I switched companies often. And for me, it was about three to four years I was looking for another position. Because again, as I said earlier, 15 to 20% raises every time I switch companies. I mean, inflation is well below the raises that I was getting over time. So my money really continued to compound because I switched companies. Now that has multiple benefits. One, yes, you make more money. But two, you get exposed to new processes, new ways of doing business. And that's going to make you a more valuable employee in the future because you're simply exposed to a lot more. You've been doing a lot more things. You're using more software. You're using different uh, business development practices. All those things combine to make you more valuable. And you expand your network. If you're only working with the same group of people for your entire career, you are limiting the power of your network because it's always the same people. But if you move to different companies, you're meeting new people, your network is expanding, and that expanded network you can use for more opportunities in the future, more money-making opportunities. And number eight, I never whined in the office. I never complained. There's nothing that will hurt your career more than being a whiner. They do not get promoted. They do not get their raises. And if business does get tight and the, and the company needs to save some money by shedding some of their staff, guess who's going to go first? If there's a whiner in the office, that person's probably going to go first. Now, I didn't like every aspect of my job. That's not what I'm saying. And if I did complain, it was outside of the office somewhere else. I did not complain to my managers. I did not whine to my coworkers. I tried to be as professional as I could. And that is why I continued to be promoted. And that is why they said yes to most of my raise requests. I was a team player and I did not complain. And number nine, I understood the nature of the business. So I alluded to this before. I didn't just go into work, complete my tasks and go home without a second thought. I was there to help the business that employed me because I know that the better the business does, the better everybody does. I will continue to have a job. I will have upward mobility as the company does better. So I would work with my boss. I would take the time to ask questions, understand the business fully, understand why I was given the tasks that, that I was, how my project that I was working on was going to benefit the business. And as I understood all these things, you can really begin to put the pieces into place about your role in the company and what you can do to take that extra step to continue benefiting the company. Because when that happens, they're going to return the favor. Or at the very least, you'll have a lot more experience to use when you switch companies in the future to get a better salary or a better position. And there you have it. Those are the nine things I did throughout my career to earn $100,000 in my late 20s. None of these things were especially complicated, but they do take a little bit of work. They just take the extra step. Really, if you can boil all these down to one simple singular concept, it's just taking the extra step. That's really all it is. That's going to make a difference when your competition is, quite frankly, half-assing it in many ways. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.